Ivara Prime, aka the Jellyfish Frame. She is one of the most popular picks when it comes to stealth missions. The build that you will see later is made specifically with spy missions in mind. This is my take on the Ivara Prime build. If you came here just to check out the build, you can refer to the timestamp shown on your screen right now. For this video, I'll only talk about two abilities, the build itself and talking about general tips for Corpus and Grenier hacking. Let's get started. First of all, let's talk about Quiver. All of these arrows are super super useful when you use them correctly. Let's take a look at the Cloak Arrow. Some of you might think that this Cloak Arrow might not be so useful because you already have Crawl, which is your third ability. It provides you invisibility at the cost of reduced movement speed. Cloak arrows are useful when you decide to be stationary in one spot. Instead of using Prowl and letting it slowly drain your energy, you can just use a single cloak arrow, shoot it on the floor and then you will get invisibility without having to worry about Prowl draining your energy. Secondly, let's talk about Dash Wire Arrow. If you shoot it from point A, which is basically where you're standing, to point B, it will create this zip line where you can use it to, well, traverse through areas. The good thing about this dash wire arrow is that the zip lines made do not interfere with Prowl. As you may have already known, certain maneuvers can actually interfere with Prowl. For example, sprinting, sliding, and even bullet jumping. Which is why when you do any of the things mentioned, it will break your invisibility. Remember, this only happens with Prowl, not your cloak arrow. Again, coming back to dash wire arrow, when you are on the zip line, you can safely sprint across the zip line without having to worry about breaking your invisibility. Bottom line, dash wire arrow can be used to significantly improve your movement speed. You can also sprint for a little while and then jump afterwards. This will create a boost with some insane velocities. Like this clip for example, you can see how fast I travel through this corridor. Always try to make use of your dash wire arrows. For the noise arrow, it might be a very useless ability to most of you, but it is pretty useful when it comes to gathering enemies in one spot without having to alert them at all. And then you can combine this with a sleep arrow to provide some pretty good crowd control. The sleep arrow in general may not be as useful as Equinox's Rest and Rage, it's still quote unquote a nice to have ability. It's better to have this than nothing, you know? And then let's talk about Prowl, which is the main focus of this build. Prowl is a very self-explanatory ability. When you activate this, it will give you invisibility, being able to pickpocket enemies, and as well as a headshot damage bonus, which scales with your power strength. Although this headshot bonus isn't really that useful because there's a lot of one-shotting weapons out there already, so we're not going to be focusing on this part of Prowl. What we're interested in is the Augment. It's called Infiltrate. It allows you to walk through security lasers without hurting you and without triggering the alarms. And when you do so, it also increases your movement speed. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you have figured out already, this is a crowd control slash spy build. And best of all, zero forma. You don't even need a single format to make this build. Let's take a look. First of all, we have the Power Duration mods, which are Argon Message, Primed Continuity, and Narrow Minded. These three mods are going to give you more than 200% power duration. This is mainly to keep your prowl up and running for as long as possible, and as well as a very long duration on your cloak arrow. This also affects your sleep arrow as well. Next, we have the Range mods, which are Overextended and Stretch. This is to give you a bigger radius for your cloak arrow and a better CC potential for your sleep arrow. And then we have a rank 3 fleeting expertise and streamline. This is pretty self-explanatory. You want to keep your prowl up and running as long as possible and as well as a lower energy cost for all abilities. And then we have the pinnacle mod of this build which is infiltrate. I have already talked about this mod earlier so we will be skipping over this. Finally, for the Exilus mod slot, you can put whatever you want. Personally, I would go for Mobilize just to give me a little bit of extra velocity when it comes to bullet jumping and other maneuvers. The Aura slot is all up to you, and for the Arcane selection, it is also 100% personal preference. And that is pretty much it for the build. At this point, I should be ending the video because I don't have much to talk about. But because I want to make this video more informative and hopefully more longer, 
let's just talk about some quick tips on hacking for both Grenier and Corpus. For Grenier hacking, it should be very, very easy because there is no time limit and it's all about reflexes. In higher level missions, you only get 3 chances before you fail the hack. But I'm pretty confident that 95% of you should be able to complete Grenier hacking without much problems because it's just so goddamn easy. For corpus hacking, I have 2 quick tips for you guys. Over hundreds and hundreds of corpus spy runs, it is highly recommended to always do the outer layer first. For example, this one right here. As you can see, I don't even need to move the middle one because it will connect to the nodes around it regardless of its rotation. But for the ones outside however, you need to move them in such a way where they can interconnect with each other. What I'm about to say is for mouse and keyboard players. If you do a left click, it will turn the node towards the right side. If you do a right click, it will turn the node to the opposite direction, which is the left side. So if you want to save time on hacking these corpus consoles, here is the number 2 tip. If you practice using both left and right mouse buttons, you will be able to hack way more quicker on average. Because you don't have to spend time spamming your left click to get to the right position. Instead, you can just use a right click and save a lot of clicks. So that's that. And I guess that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys liked it, then be sure to leave a like, write a nice comment, and please consider subscribing. If you guys want to support this channel, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. And finally, be sure to follow my Twitter for more video updates and other shenanigans. My Twitter handle is arikirinoyt. Once again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in another video. Goodbye. Have everything looking for. Get to extraction.